Typically speaking, when you shoot video with a smartphone, everything is in focus. Deep focus, as it's often called. And that can be absolutely fine and work well, depending on what you're shooting. But when you're trying to do something more cinematic, you often want to have layers to the image. And that can be achieved in a variety of different ways. So today we'll look at one way to add depth to pretty much any shot you do with your smartphone. Learn how to turn your smartphone into a professional quality video camera. Be sure to check out our mobile filmmaking courses. And also don't forget, we have a companion filmmaking podcast. Links are in the description. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun. And yeah, today looking at how to add depth and what I would call production value to your smartphone cinematography, to any shots you do. It doesn't have to be a movie. In this example, we're gonna look at B-roll. But first, just to explain what I mean by depth, to me, depth is adding layers in an image, making an image look more three-dimensional instead of flat, more one-dimensional. And depending on what you're doing, you can do that with lighting, lens choice or aperture, meaning depth of field, and then also camera movement. And when I say lens choice or aperture, I should also include their composition and framing. And that's the main thing I'm gonna focus on today, no pun intended. A previous video I did, I showed how I used one light to create three very different looks. And the first thing I did was, originally we had the actress up against a wall and it just looked really flat. And so we moved her to the center of the room and then we had distance behind her, we had depth. And even though you're shooting with a smartphone, it still helps, again, by the lighting you do, the camera movement, the lens choice, and the composition and framing. And the nice thing is, with the newer iPhone 12 Pro Max, the larger sensor and the wider aperture, f1.6, you do get more shallow depth of field without using any kind of adapters. And yeah, what I'm talking about today is not using a DOF adapter, by the way. Those, obviously, you can add depth with depth of field. But here, I'm talking about using a smartphone, the built-in lenses, and as an option, adding an external lens. So what I'm going to do is actually almost a quasi desk tour, a fake desk tour, if you will, of this actual desk. And so I'm gonna shoot it two different ways, a B-roll sequence showing off this desk. First way, more of a straightforward, what I would call a beginner way. Second way, more of an advanced way and using depth, using the depth technique. All right, that was version one. Now here's version two. So by adding motion, and then importantly, foreground objects out of focus, I was able to add layers, which in turn creates depth. So let's hop into Premiere Pro real quick and take a look. Okay, I just wanted to hop in here real quickly and show a couple things. And first I wanted to say that I shot this with Filmic Pro Log V3 10-bit, and here is the original log footage. And then I use my LUT packs to correct it and some color grading within Premiere Pro. And my LUT packs, if you're interested in these, are available on my website at ifilmmakers.tv, link in the description. But what I want to first say is that these wide shots that are static can be good. You definitely can use these. I just wouldn't use them exclusively. You want to mix and match your type of shots. And so it's not that these are necessarily bad shots. 
they're just not as creative and in some cases you can almost say they're boring or a little bit beginnerish or amateurish meaning you're trying to show what's on the desk and you just plop the camera down and you're shooting straight down like this shot of the microphone and the mouse this shot's a good shot kind of a low angle wide establishing shot this shot would be fine but when you put them all together they're just very very basic and so notice this is the sequence that I'm adding depth to. The very first shot here is of the phone. You've got the mouse out of focus and then just kind of a creative low angle shot of the, of the iPhone on the table. It's just more visually interesting. The cords over here are out of focus. Same with this shot here. You've got a chair in the foreground. And by the way, the light on the wall, I mentioned lighting helps with depth and it does. And so the LED light, the blue light on the wall, helps with separation. Otherwise, this would be a super flat image, even shooting it with the longer lens look. And so that applies also to this more static, boring stuff. It still has some separation because of the lighting. But back to this, now almost every shot I did over here has a blurry foreground object, which is a really easy and good way to add depth to your shots. Now you wouldn't want to do this on everything because it could get old, but it is nice to have this and then maybe mix and match it with some more straightforward shots. Now this shot here of the headphones is probably the most classic type of shot where I'm talking about layers. So you've got this foreground completely out of focus, the subject, in this case, the headphones are in focus, and then the background back here with the keyboard and the table are out of focus. So you have three very distinct layers there. That's what you kind of want to go for, even on this shot here. So I've got the table here in the foreground, the speaker here is in focus, and then the wall back here is out of focus. Again, layering the shot. And so I did that on all these throughout. And even the shot here of the microphone, the close up, nothing's really out of focus, but I did movement on the shot. And so it has a somewhat parallax effect that just gives it more depth. But this is an easy way to add production value to your shots, especially using a small sensor phone. So really a pretty simple technique. It just takes experience and practice to see this kind of stuff in your head versus just shooting things straightforward. And by the way, again, the straightforward shots can work and do work. It might be a good idea to mix and match, get some more creative shots that have more depth to them, lower angle, foreground, motion, and mix them with wider static shots. And that way, you'll have a good B-roll sequence and a great edit. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.